subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 5th of October. Indian Prime Minister Modi launches 75 urban development projects in Uttar Pradesh. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan forms high-level cell to probe Pandora Papers revelations. And Displaced Afghans call for justice and aid as desperation rises. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated an urban conclave and laid the foundation stone of 75 urban development projects in northern Uttar Pradesh state. He also digitally handed over keys to 75,000 beneficiaries of central housing scheme. This comes as Uttar Pradesh is expected to go to polls early next year. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday inaugurated the Azadi at 75 New Urban India Transforming Urban Landscape Conference Come Expo and laid the foundation stone of 75 urban development projects in Lucknow city of Northern Uttar Pradesh state. The Prime Minister under the Centre's housing scheme also digitally handed over keys of houses to 75,000 beneficiaries in 75 districts in the state and flagged off 75 buses for seven cities. He highlighted the achievements of his government and attacked the previous government for their reluctance to bring about development for the poor people. The event is being held as Uttar Pradesh is expected to go to polls early next year. पीएम आवास योजना के तहत शहरों में एक करोड़ तेरह लाख से ज्यादा घरों के निर्माण की मंजूरी दी कहा तेरह लाख और कहा एक करोड़ तेरह लाख इसमें से पचास लाख से ज्यादा घर बनाकर The conference come expo will be open for the public from October 6 to 7. It is themed on transforming the urban landscape with a specific focus on the transformative changes brought about in Uttar Pradesh and will focus on experience sharing, commitment and direction for further action. India lashed out at Pakistan for again racking up the Kashmir issue at the United Nations on Monday and said constructive contribution cannot be expected from a country that has an established practice of hosting terrorists and is the epicenter of global terrorism and the biggest destabilizing force in the world. India on Monday strongly hit out at Pakistan for again breaking up the Kashmir issue at the United Nations and said Thank constructive you, contribution Chairman. cannot be expected from a country that has an established practice of hosting terrorists and is the epicenter of global terrorism and the biggest destabilizing force in the world. Counselor in India's permanent mission to the UN A Amarnath in a right of reply said the UN should categorically reject Pakistan's nefarious and vicious designs and hold it to account and not let it abuse UN platforms for spreading disinformation hate and incite violence as the epicenter of global terrorism Pakistan is the biggest destabilizing force in the world and has repeatedly indulged in cross border terrorism against its neighbors they have no regard for UN principles While Pakistan's permanent representative speaks about peace and security here, his prime minister glorifies global terrorists like Osama bin Laden as martyrs. The Indian diplomat also reiterated that the entire union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral and inalienable part of India, including the areas under Pakistan's illegal occupation, which it should vacate immediately. The Muslim majority region of Kashmir has been at the heart of decades of hostility between India and Pakistan. 
India has long blamed neighboring Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has formed a high-powered cell to investigate if any irregularity has been committed by the 700 Pakistanis named in the Pandora Papers in establishing offshore companies. The expose revealed that key members of PM Khan's inner circle, including cabinet members, have secretly owned an array of offshore companies and trust, holding millions of dollars of hidden wealth. Pakistan's Information and Broadcasting Minister Fawad Chaudhry on Monday said that Prime Minister Imran Khan has formed a special high-level cell to prove the Pandora Papers expose hours after the two-year investigation came to light. The International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, or ICIJ, a Washington, D.C.-based network of reporters and media organizations, said the documents link about 35 current and former national leaders and more than 330 politicians and officials in 91 countries and territories to secret stores of wealth. Among those named in the papers are more than 700 Pakistanis, including several members of Khan's cabinet. Finance Minister Shaukat Tareen, who was among the Pakistanis identified, told Geo TV everyone would be investigated, including himself. He denied wrongdoing. Meanwhile, Pakistan's opposition on Monday called on Imran Khan to order cabinet ministers and aides named in leaked financial documents to resign from office and face investigation. Sherry Rahman, a leader of the opposition Pakistan People's Party, in a tweet said she was not surprised that the Premier's close aides were named in the Pandora Papers. Maryam Aurangzeb, the spokeswoman for the main opposition Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, PMLN party of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif said Khan had to remove all those identified in the files. The Supreme Court sacked Sharif as Prime Minister in 2017 on corruption charges after his family's London properties came to light in an earlier leak of documents known as the Panama Papers. Sharif, who lives in self-exile, denied wrongdoing. Modern news from Pakistan. Locals in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi, have expressed anger and dismay over a consecutive hike in prices of petrol and diesel in just 30 days. Daily commuters have slammed PM Imran Khan-led government over its failure to control the fuel prices, which have shaken their budgets amid an all-time high inflation. As petrol and diesel prices have been hiked yet again in Pakistan, locals in financial capital of Karachi have expressed anger against Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government. The price of petrol has surged to Rs 127.30 per litre, while the high-speed diesel cost of Rs 122.04 per litre now, after they were both increased by nearly Rs 4 per litre from October 1st onwards. Locals said the consecutive rise in fuel prices in nearly 30 days has affected their budgets and increased burden on them amid an already all-time high inflation in the country. President of PMLN party and opposition leader in the National Assembly, Shabazz Sharif, took to Twitter and said the historic price hike is result of bad leadership and slammed the government for putting blame on external factors to shirk responsibility. Meanwhile, Sheri Rehman, the Vice President of Opposition Pakistan People's Party, said that the government has dropped a petrol bomb in times of extreme and acute inflation. She said the ruling PTI government borrows like no government before and tells people the good days are here. In news from Afghanistan, poverty and hunger have spiraled since the Taliban take over on August 15. Further worsening the crisis in Afghanistan that is battling drought and the COVID-19 pandemic. As desperation soars, Afghans displaced by conflict say they have not received any aid from anyone and are calling on the United Nations and the international community for help. 
amid warnings of a looming humanitarian crisis in the country, Afghans displaced by conflict on Monday said they have not received any aid from anyone and are calling on the United Nations and the international community for help as desperation soars. Families rendered homeless following the Taliban's takeover on August 15 have taken to setting up tents in a park in capital Kabul, with many women seen wearing burqas. Poverty and hunger have spiraled since the Taliban take over, further worsening the crisis in a country that is battling drought and the COVID-19 pandemic. Half a million people have been displaced in Afghanistan in recent months, according to UN High Commissioner for Refugee Filippo Grandi, a number which would grow if health services, schools and the economy break down. The country has plunged into economic crisis as the nation's international assistance has been largely cut off. Billions of dollars in central bank assets held abroad have also been frozen, which has put pressure on the banking system and prevented most transactions involving U.S. dollars. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal's main opposition, CPN-UML, the Communist Party of Nepal Unified Marxist-Leninist, led by Chairman K.P. Sharma Oli, yet again obstructed the meeting of the House of Representatives on Tuesday. Ever since the new parliament session began on September 8, CPN-UML lawmakers have resorted to obstructions demanding Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota to take prompt action against 14 lawmakers, including Madhav Kumar Nepal who have been expelled from their party. They have blamed Sapkota of facilitating a split in the UML by not confirming their expulsion. The lower house of the parliament had to be adjourned until October 8 amid the protests. Kashmiri apples are known worldwide for their superb flavour. With harvesting season in full swing, Orchard owners in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory are looking for profits as they expect a decent apple harvest this year. Tens of thousands of people in the region are dependent on apple production directly or indirectly for their livelihood. Apple growers in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory are busy picking the fruits of their hard work and are all set to ship out their produce across the country. They are looking for profits as they expect a decent apple harvest this year. However, climate conditions have resulted in decent harvest as compared to previous year, an apple grower said. Some of the districts of the region, Shopian, Baramulla and Ganderbal, especially famous for the apples, have already sent out some of the season's early varieties to local markets. Apples are harvested, graded according to their size and quality, and finally packed in cartons for sale. This time, we are from Ganderbal, so we have a lot of apples here, which is why we have a little bit of apples here. The main thing is that we have a lot of apples here. बहुत सारे ज़्यादा अच्छे सेब निकलते हैं तो इस टाइम सेब का ये सीज़न चल रहा है तो सेब उतार रहे हैं। जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इस इंडिया के लार्जेस्ट एप्पल प्रोड्यूसिंग रीज़न एंड अलोंग विथ हिमाचल प्रदेश स्टेट इस नोन इस द एप्पल बॉल ऑफ़ इंडिया। इट इस द मेन स्टेट ऑफ़ द लोकल इकोनॉमी विथ well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi launches 75 urban development projects in Uttar Pradesh. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan forms high-level cell to pro Pandora Papers revelations. And... Displaced Afghans call for justice and aid as desperation rises.
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.